AI and world models, the whole quest for world models as the new quest, not going to happen. And I think uh, taking after Sutton, a really bitter lesson. A correspondent friend, Scott Warner by name, sent me this uh, discussion to look at. Richard Sutton, father of reinforcement learning, uh, winner of the Turing Prize recently with Dwarkresh Patel, just very recently, a week ago. On the bitter lesson, now the bitter lesson is a uh, little paper that uh, Sutton did. And the main uh, point of it here is this, building for how we think we do it. For example, how we think people did chess or how humans do speech recognition or how masters of Go did Go just does not work. And he says the breakthrough has been just via scaling, I mean scaling, increasing scaling, computation on search and learning. That is by learning neural net, neural net op operations like deep learning, reinforcement learning. That is applying these basic statistical algorithms, shall we say, to uh, these problems and we get great results. Great results, we should say, with maybe some reservations. That is, it's not exactly speech recognition. It's not exactly even Go. Remember, as I recall, the, the Go, AlphaGo was defeated rather quickly once people understood that uh, it had no concept of what a group was in Go. I don't know where things sit now, but just an interesting little aspect of what these breakthroughs actually are. So this uh, got the attention of Gary Marcus, the premier AI critic. Game over for pure LLMs. Even Turing Award winner Rich Sutton has gotten off the bus of LLMs. And he quotes this summary, which is a fairly good summary, to quote, Richard Sutton contends that LLMs are not viable path, not a viable path to true general intelligence. Considering them a dead end, his primary critique is that LLMs operate by mimicking human behavior uh, and predicting the next token on vast amounts of internet text rather than developing an internal world model. So that's part of our theme here, a world model, or possessing genuine goals. Sutton explicitly disagrees with the notion that LLMs build robust world models, arguing that the predictive capability is limited to what a person would say, not what would happen in the physical world. In other words, all you have is words, not concrete events. He asserts that these models lack the capacity to be surprised, we'll come back to that in a bit, by real world events, or to adjust their understanding based on unexpected outcomes, which is crucial for learning from experience. Well, there's gonna be a deeper lesson here. The whole, we must build world models now, that thrust, which Jan LeCun is part of, is never happening either. So let's see why. So back to this statement by Sutton. The predictive capability is limited to what a person would say. That is, we're talking pure language. Well, I'm taking a slide or two from uh, this one I did in real scaling law, scaling in reality. This, the dynamic event, coffee stirring, my favorite, a four-dimensional, extended over time, multimodal event. And it's invariant structure. It has velocity flow fields, adiabatic ratios, the energy oscill oscillation, the frequency of oscillation, the inertial tensor carried over the haptic flow field where that the inertial tensor is specific to the length of the spoon, acoustical invariance, texture gradients, ratios, flows, all part of J.J. Gibson ecological psychology. So this is not this, a pile of vectors, as would be in a large language model, which is to say, therefore, not a high dimensional vector space or a high dimensional uh, manifold, a vector space manifold. I don't care whether the dimensionality is 10 squared or 10 to the 66. That is, I don't care how many parameters you have, you're not going to reconstruct or represent that event. 
this, this whole structure of events, this is the ground truth, I would argue, that Sutton says LLMs lack at about 510 in the uh, discussion with um, Rakesh. And when this structure is violated, take a little cup there that's going up and down um, an inch above the edge, there's surprise. I talked about this in number 80 on, on uh, abduction, a key aspect of abduction. So this event with its concrete dynamics cannot possibly be recomposed by associating via probability vectors these symbolic elements that we identify in the event. These elements are just differentiated as aspects of a multitude possible from the event, or they're dissociated from the whole. It's a whole pile of others we could throw in. None of them all added up equal to the event. AI assumes this association, this, this, this association I noted. It has no idea that this is something that has to be accounted for. And that one can impart understanding of this concrete dynamical experience via these associated elements, or that this is understanding, as LLM people like to argue, well, it's kind of, I'm just going to say, a little too left-brained. So, of course, the AI folk will say, well, all we have to do is connect the um, and tie the word vectors, our high-dimensional vector space there, to the images and ultimately to a robot arm, and, and then we'll have understanding. Say the man stirs the coffee with the spoon, or have the robot turn the, stir the coffee with the spoon. But all we're going to do is break that dynamic, continuously transforming event into a series of states. Each is a pixel grid. In other words, there's no actual image there. It's just a correlated set of pixels. And instead of the nine, as we're cat category and classifying trying to learn nines, we'd have coffee stirring in there. We'd vectors for the coffee stirring. So we're simply back where we started, more vectors, just another high dimensional manifold. What we've lost, First, the four-dimensional invariant structure we just noted, the inertial tensors existing over, only over dynamic force flows, adiabatic invariance, also only force flows. And secondly, time, the indivisible flow of the event. The instance, like notes of a melody permeating each other, building, the hand fatiguing, the clinking, sloshing, inducing them, say, mellow feeling. It is the quality they find over an indivisible building flow of time. Got to make sure that my uh, microphone's working. Yep. So bumps in an abstract manifold, as I talked about, simply do not equal that event. So another problem. This is a world model, our model of coffee stirring with all those invariance laws like hamburger eating, which by the way is a facial flow field with all the invariance involved. Driving down a road, building a, or baking a cake. All defined by invariance laws over concrete forces, over the indivisible flow of the ever transforming universal field. Not the discrete states, discrete instance of a Turing machine or Turing machine computation. So invariance defined over an indivisible flow. Well, these cannot be represented statically. They do not exist as states, static state after static state. They cannot be bits traveling along neurons. This is why J.J. Gibson argued for a con conception of resonance, that is, the brain resonating to these dynamically transforming event structures, slash invariance with all their invariance, over time. And that resonance specific to the event within the field, just where it says it is. And this was highly coordinate with Bergson's earlier vision, where Bergson placed that resonating brain, shall we say, within a holographic field, indivisibly transforming. And the resonance then is equivalent to a modulated reconstructive wave passing through this indivisibly transforming holographic field and again, specific to a source, 
within the field, an aspect of the field now as an image. So specified right where it says it is, within the external multimodal field. That is, as a multimodal event. This is extremely important. Because if we just slap a Turing machine into the brain and say that's what it is, discrete state by discrete state processing, well, what we've done is transform that multimodal event into a homogeneous medium, the computer memory. The multimodality is irretrievably lost. There's no such thing as a multimodal event inside a computer. So all of this lies beneath a much, much more bitter lesson, beyond anything a Sutton or a Marcus are prepared to deal with. Let's take Sutton's comment again. Uh, we have to learn the bitter lesson that building how we think we think just does not work. And I should say, and how we think we see or how we think we hear. Here's the problem. The very notion of computation, sticking that computer inside the brain and saying that's what it is, the very notion of computation is a how we think we think. This concept is based in the classic metaphysics of space and time, where the indivisible transformation of the universal field, what we call time, is reduced to a series of static instants, states, or immobilities. But describing motion as a series of static states, or points on a line, or basically immobilities, is, not, is an infinite regress, first of all, and an absurdity. You're trying to reconstruct the motion by a series of immobilities, an absurdity, as Bergson noted. So the brain does not dwell in the field, the universal field of the classic metaphysic. Rather, the brain is intrinsically part of the indivisible transformation of the universal field. It could care less about the classic metaphysic of space and time and Turing machines. The metaphysic is a derivative. It's a derivative of the of the cognitive development, developmental trajectory of the, of the brain, heavily described by Piaget. So an entirely different conception of how we think the brain works is needed. Gibson, Bergson, in my opinion, point the way. AI remains resolutely oblivious, not only of Bergson, but even of Gibson and ecological psychology. Though the ecological psychology folks I've known before have a bit of blame for, for not understanding what they've got. Just a quick postscript. Dwakesh, in the course of the discussion, says, humans can go to the moon. I want to understand what makes human intelligence special. Sutton says, I like the way you think that's obvious. If we understand a squirrel, we'd be almost all the way there. And Dwakesh says, Dwakesh says, Quite a different called time grasping this, but to me, the squirrel's little brain is resonating to the invariant structure of nut bearing events, all kinds of other events, tree climbing, etc., just like ours to coffee stirring. Dwarf Cash is flummoxed by this by Sutton's point because, like all AI, he does not grasp that cognition is based on perception. You have to have a model of perception, ultimately, how we have the image of the external world, the coffee cup out there. The, the uh, nut out there. Another point, Sutton says, the other thing I do to not feel out of sync or thinking in a strange way is to look not at my local field, but to look back into time, into history, and to see what people thought classically about mine. I view myself as a classicist rather than a contrarian. I go with what the larger community of thinkers about mind have always thought. Well, Kesh, no interest in an obvious follow-up question. What thinkers? What? Changes the subject. But Gibson, Wertheimer, Piaget, Wertheimer, many others were well before AI and cognitive science, which in my experience was from its inception compromised by the computer model, so offers no help to AI. These earlier, earlier classic thinkers were, well, they've got a wealth of information there. And AI doesn't know that they should look there. So again, I uh, point your attention to this book. I think the only alternative model of the brain that I, I know of out there, 
alternative to the computer model. And time, consciousness, Berks and Gibson, and all the problems of AGI, worth a look in my opinion. So next we'll see, till then, signing off.